Ooh. Hey guys, welcome to the show. Today we're talking about NAS raid levels. I'm gonna be showing you performance tests, how to set up your raid, how to set up other stuff that might catch you when it comes to performance, security, safety, all that kind of stuff that you what you need to know about for NAS drive. So this example, I'm using a 472XT, this is a QNAP drive, but these, the theory behind this also works in Synology. So I'm gonna be showing you how to set up RAID levels on the QNAP, but I'll tell you about the performance and the benefits of the all different RAID types. So there's two major RAID types, there's RAID 5 and RAID 6. There is other ones like RAID 0 and RAID 10. RAID 5 and RAID 6, what that means is RAID 5 means one of the drives will be your safety. It's going to split your, your data across all the other drives and one of the drives will be your safety net. RAID 6, it's just two of the drives will be your safety net. Now, the thing to consider is as soon as one of your drives messes up and you need to replace it, that means if you're on RAID 5, you got as long as time as until one of the other drives fails to replace that drive. And on top of that, once you replace the drive, your uh, NAS has to do something called rebuilding, which means it needs to start copying the Stripe data over to your next drive, that safety drive. And that operation can take 30 hours. By default, the priority is set to medium. So you can click manage, resync priority, set a low speed, high speed, or default. Personally, I usually leave it at low speed so that way my file transfers are set at the highest priority. But for this case, I want it to sync as fast as possible for this demonstration. I've got 14 terabyte drives, 14 terabyte drives, depends on how much you ram them, but it can take 30 hours. So if in the time period between a drive failure and 30 hours or however fast you manage to get your data onto another drive, if another drive fails, you've lost all the data because it can only support one drive failure. With RAID 6, you have two drives. So if one of the drives fail, you jump in there. If you replace it, and if you can survive the 30 hours, if one of the other drives fails within that 30 hour period, of you maybe even, even, even longer than that, you might have to go to Amazon and order a replacement drive. It could be a week until you get this whole solution back up and running. So if a second drive fails in that period, you're safe, but if a third drive fails, then you, you know, you've lost your data. So, that's the kind of safety net that RAID gives you, but it comes at a cost. And the cost is, uh, yeah, I'm gonna show you the, the, the benchmarks, but it's 50%. All right, this is RAID 5 unencrypted. 506, 463. All right, this is RAID 6 unencrypted. 3, 2, 1, go. 3, 5, 396. All right, let's copy 89 gigabytes to my Unencrypted shared folder of RAID 5. Three, two, one, go. All right, let's copy 89 gigabytes to our RAID 6 unencrypted folder. Three, two, one, go. RAID 6, my test was 50% slower than RAID 5. And that is a big, that's a big, big um, loss, 50%. So what a lot of people do out there in the world, professionals, they tend to run their systems on RAID 5, but they have a second, a second NAS drive backing up all their data from the first drive onto the second drive, the back the units backing up all the time. And that means if one of the drive fails, you got that 30, 72 hour w period window to replace that drive. And if the whole another drive fails, you still got your backup unit up and running. So that's what you do, you need to have a backup solution. So me personally, when I started getting into this NAS game, I only had one NAS unit and uh, I set my guy up as RAID 6. Going back to it now, I would have probably just gone for RAID 5 because it's faster, 50% faster. But at the time I only had one NAS. And the problem with uh, RAID 6 is, you can't go from RAID 6 to RAID 5 without just getting a whole bunch of new drives, copying the data and just starting from scratch. But you can go from RAID 5 to RAID 6. So it depends on where you are in the world. When I was a bit younger, I only had one NAS drive. I didn't want to spend too much money in my tools. Now I'm a bit more serious about it. So I do respect my tools and I do respect spending money on my tools. So if I was to do it again, I'd probably just get two NASs and set them up with RAID 5 and back it up that way. That's more secure, it's more safer, all that kind of stuff. But if I was a student, I'd probably just be safer and just get one RAID 6 and back up to storage solutions like EC, 
you can go to Amazon or you can do it to Google Drive, all that kind of stuff to to back up your most important files, and you can you know run backup you know to the cloud all the time. Of course, the cost is you have to re-download that data. It takes time and all that kind of stuff. So that's something to be aware of. RAID six, yeah, it's fifty percent slower than RAID five. If you can, there is RAID ten. RAID ten, what that does is it uses two drives and they kind of mirror each other. So every single two drives, they would mirror each other. So you've got four drives, two of them will be as one drive and two of them will be as one drive. So you essentially got two drives and that one was actually slower than RAID 5. All right, this is RAID 10, unencrypted. Three, two, one, go. That's four, six, two and four, two, four. It can be more advantageous if you are trying to combat RAID 6. It was only slightly faster than RAID 6. It wasn't that big of a performance improvement to me. There's other stuff, for example, RAID 1. That one just completely mirrors it 100% and there's RAID 0. And that one just makes all the data run as fast as possible because there is no backup solution. It just copies the data on all the drives. The other thing to consider is when setting up your volumes is that there is um, simplified volumes, static volumes, where it pretty much just writes to the RAID itself. And then there's dynamic storage pools, especially in QNAP. In, um, in Synology, they use something called SHR. That essentially is the same sort of situation, although they do it a different way, they allow different features. But essentially, you're getting a slower performing unit if you do go down the storage pools route. So one final tip for maximum performance, don't create a storage pool. Create a new volume and set it as a static volume. And I'll show you the difference. So here is where your RAID is. And then there's something called a storage pool. And then you get thick volumes that are on top of the storage pools. But if you select a static volume, it will just set it up directly on top of the RAID. Now this will give you up to 20% better performance, but they don't offer advanced features such as snapshots. So if you're a beginner and you want more safety, go for the storage pool and go for the thick volume. However, if you kind of know what you're doing and won't be using snapshots, you can just create a static volume directly. And in that case, you select the RAID and you create the volume directly. Four times 14, 56 plus 25. So my maximum is probably 81, 32K. Now this doesn't affect the performance. It just affects how large your RAID can go and the number of files. So the larger your RAID can be, the less files it can store and the smaller your RAID could be, the more files you can store. Advanced settings, I'm gonna encrypt my drive. There you go, RAID six and we're saved, finish, done. Initializing or rebuilding rate. So now we're creating a static volume on top of a RAID 6 and it's gonna be 20% faster than the performance I've been showing you. The problem with Synologies is they have Atom processors, not Intel's, not, not you know the medical grade CPUs, so they run very, very slow. So if you do use storage pools, they have some nifty features. For example, it allows you to make snapshot copies of your data at one time and it's smart enough to not use up your space multiple times when doing it. The negatives of that is because you're not putting your RAID on the bare metal, you're not putting it directly on the hard drive systems. If you do run into the situation where you need to recover your data, the tools you use to recover your data, it's not as readily available to combat the situation. You need to probably just go to QNAP, ask them for help, go for proprietary tools specifically to that use case. Whereas if you just have a normal RAID system, there are tools to help you recover data from RAID 5. RAID 6, there are tools that help you recover RAID 6, but that's more complicated. But when it comes to storage pools and SHR, that's proprietary. So you're gonna find less tools when it comes to recovering your data. And it could be very, very important when you go down that route. And finally, there's something to be aware of is encrypted and unencrypted. All right, this is RAID 5 unencrypted. 506463. This is RAID 5 encrypted. 525534. Unencrypted and encrypted. The speeds weren't that much of a difference. I'll show you the speeds right now. But um, I'd always go for encrypted because that means if someone just nabs your hard drives, they can't just see your data and you're pretty much just slightly more safer than if you had unencrypted where you know people just steal your data left, right, and center. So that's a, a video I've been looking to put out there for a while. Just wanted to share my experience with RAID 6, RAID 5. It's been a few years now I'm using the systems and I wanted to let you know that, yeah, RAID 6, it's great. I'm using RAID 6. I can still push my NAS unit very, 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 very well. If I was doing it again, I'd probably just go down the multiple NASs with RAID 5 because it is faster.
Hope you guys found this video useful. Stay tuned, next episode or one of the future episodes, I'll be doing how to firewall up your internet connection. We'll be putting PFSense on a virtual machine, on a NAS, and uh, stopping all the internet traffic from um, hacking your systems. So I hope you found this video useful. Let me know what you guys think about raids and all that kind of stuff in the comment section below. And hope you guys enjoyed the show.